Assalamu alaikum, my dear student and friend. Today we are going to study the alkanes and its synthesis. The highlights of today's lectures are we will discuss hydrogenation of alkanes and alkynes and words reaction by which we can synthesize alkane, production of carbonyl compounds. We will discuss in three different ways that how we can synthesize alkane. The first one is Clemens reduction. The second one is wolf kishner reduction. And third one is the Mosinger reduction. Our fourth reaction will be called electrolytic method, which is also known as Kolbe's electrolytic method. And last, we will discuss the reduction of alkyl halide can also synthesize alkane. Let's move on the lecture. The first one, hydrogenation of alkenes and alkynes. As you know that alkenes uh, and alkynes, they are basically unsaturated hydrocarbon. In alkene, we have carbon-carbon double bond, or generally we have one degree of unsaturation while in alkyne, we have two degree of unsaturation in uh, between two carbon atom. And we have two pi bond and one sigma bond. So what happened when we treat alkene or alkyne in presence of a catalyst? Keep remember this reaction will proceed in the presence of a catalyst. Generally the catalyst used for the hydrogenation of alkenes and alkynes are platinum, palladium, or nickel. Okay, in alkene, just one mole of hydrogen atom will be used to give you the alkane, corresponding alkane, definitely the weak bond, the pi bond will uh, broken up to give this corresponding alkane. And similarly, if we have an alkyne, we need two mole of our hydrogen. And ultimately we have the corresponding alkane. Let's see some general example. For example, in this case, you see here, it's a, an alkene pi bond will broken up it. And upon addition of hydrogen, we will have this two methyl propane. And in the other example, we have cyclohexene. Upon addition of hydrogen in presence of a catalyst, we have a cyclohexene. And the third example, we have basically two heptine. When we add the hydrogen, of course, as we have discussed, in previous slide that alkyne having two degree of unsaturation, that's why we are adding here two mole of hydrogen in presence of a catalyst. And ultimately we have its corresponding alkane, which is heptane in this case. The second reaction, the Wurz reaction. It is very oldest method to synthesize alkane. And uh, if uh, this reaction happened in the presence of alkyl halide, upon treat treatment with the alkali metal, generally we use sodium. It's uh, a type of a ferry radical reaction. What happened if we are using a same alkyl halide, we will have dimer from two equivalent of alkyl halide. And if we are using two different alkyl halide, it will lead to an approximately the statistical mixture of the product. Let's see the journal reaction of this uh, worst reaction. Say for example, if we have an alkyl halide, this R could be any carbon chain and X could be chlorine or bromine, vice versa. We need two molecule of this alkyl halide. It could be same or different. In case of same, we have a diameter as we have discussed in the point number one. And if we have the these two alkyl halide different, we will have a mixture of alkane. So when we treat this alkyl halide with sodium metal, ultimately we will have the alkane and two molecule of sodium halide. As I discuss when I start this reaction, this reaction will proceed with the chain reaction with the, with the chain reaction. Let's see here. The first two steps are same. Uh, as I shown here, the alkyl halide upon treatment with the sodium metal uh, through the free radical mechanism, alkyl and the halogen will cleave to give you alkyl radical and same in the second reaction, which is similar to the first one, will generate the second alkyl radical. And uh, ultimately these two alkyl radical will combine together to give you the corresponding alkane. Of course, 
chain reaction have three main step but for the sake of simplicity i just show show the main step here let's see the limitation of this reaction uh, the first limitation of this reaction that it cannot synthesize the methane as you can see here in the previous slide we need two molecule of alkyl halide to synthesize alkane and uh, of course the uh, the simplest alkyl halide could be the methane halide while methane halide will react with methane halide to give you the ethane so the smallest alkane which could be synthesized by words reaction is ethane so that's why using this reaction we cannot synthesize methane and similarly the second limitation of this reaction that in the case of the tertiary halide this reaction fails the reason behind is that tertiary halide include elimination reaction which basically favors the elimination reactions and uh, the other factor that tertiary alkyl halide cannot proceed to synthesize alkane via wurtz reaction is that they have the steric hindrance it means the bulky group we have on both alkyl group it will um, moves toward the elimination rather than the combination reaction our third reaction to synthesize alkane is the reduction of carbonyl compound we can rename this reduction of carbonyl compounds to say for example deoxygenation of aldehydes or ketones or it can also be read as the reduction of carbonyl to the ch2 group let's see as i discuss during the in the first slide that we have three method to convert carbonyl compound into alkane the first one is the clemens reduction the second one wolf kirchner and third one the mosinger reduction what happened in the clemens reduction it occurs under acidic condition means those compound which are base labile or sensitive with, with base can can convert into the alkane using a clemens reduction because the substrate must be stable to a strong acid that's why this reaction uh, easily conducted under the acidic condition we use generally amalgamated zinc which is also known as zinc in mercury and in the next step it will reduce with hcl and will heat this carbonyl compound will convert into the alkane you can see here the proton will come from this acid to convert this ketonic group into the alkane let's see some example for example this acetophenone uh, in this reagent it will convert into this ch2 group we have ethyl benzene this is not the specific example we have so many other example next reaction is condensation of the carbonyl compound occur to convert hydrazine to into the hydrazone group. okay now keep remember student that wolf kirchner reduction is basically dealt with those carbonyl compound which are basically acid labile as we have discussed in the first reaction of uh, clemens reduction so that's why we treat with the um, first we protect the carbonyl group by reacting with the hydrazine and it will convert this ketonic group into the hydrazone and in the next step this hydrazone will be treated with the hydroxyl or the strong base to convert into the alkane okay see as i mentioned here the treatment with the base induces the reduction of the carbon coupled with oxidation of the hydrazine to the gaseous nitrogen to yield the corresponding alkane okay now keep remember in the first step ketonic group see the mechanism somehow ketonic group react with hydrazone hydrazine now two hydrogen from the hydrazine and the oxygen will condense together and eliminate in the form of the water molecule and this is known as the hydrazone and this group is known as imine as well now in the second step the base will abstract the proton from this hydrazone base will abstract the proton 
this bond will shift toward this in between the nitrogen and the carbon nitrogen double bond will collapse and abstract the proton from the water molecule. This water molecule generated from the first step during the condensation of the hydrazine and the carbon group. Okay, now what happened? We have this intermediate upon this reaction. We have N double bond N and the hydrogen and vice versa. And the hydroxyl group will regenerate in this step. Now what happened? In this step, this hydroxyl group will further, further abstract the proton from this uh, intermediate. The bond between nitrogen and hydrogen will collapse and it will shift here. Ultimately, nitrogen will be eliminated by shifting of these electron on the carbon and will generate this carbon ion. And nitrogen will evolve during this reaction. Now this carbon ion will abstract the proton from the water molecule. Now where this water molecule came from? From, the, from here. When hydroxyl group abstract the proton from this NH, it will give you the water molecule. This carbon ion abstract the proton and ultimately generate this corresponding alkane. And of course, base here is using as a catalyst, it will regenerate. So that's how Wolf Kirchner reduction is used to convert carbonyl compound into its corresponding alkane. Let's see some simple example here. We have a benzophenone when we treat with hydrazine and the potassium hydroxide, it will ultimately convert into diphenylmethane. Okay, the third reaction. Those species which are acid and base labile can be converted into corresponding alkane under the neutral condition. Here we are using basically thiol. And in the, this reaction occurs in two steps. The first step is the reaction of carbonyl compound with this thiol. And the second step is the reduction with hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. Let's see here, I just wrote this step as I mentioned in the previous slide. First, carbonyl compound is being converted into a thioketal and thioacetal. Here, I use the term thioketal and thioacetal. If a starting carbonyl compound is a ketone, upon treatment with the sulfur containing thiol group, it will give you thioketal. And if the starting compound is an aldehyde, upon treatment with the thiol group, it will give you thioacetal. Now, this thioketal or thioacetal reduce with hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst to its corresponding alkane. These are the two main steps of Mozingo reduction. Our fourth reaction to synthesize alkane is Kolbe's electrolytic method. Now, this re reaction used to reduce the carboxylates or carboxylic acid salt, sodium or potassium salt of a dicarboxylic acid on electrolysis gives an alkane. Let's see here an example. For example, if we have sodium acetate, and of course we need to dissolve sodium acetate into water, and upon placing into the electrolysis, of course electrolysis we need to use to a cathode and anode, anode plates, and ultimately we have the alkane, the corresponding alkane, how many carbon we have in the corresponding carboxylic acid salt, it will give you that alkane, along with carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. Let's see how this reaction occurs. At anode, where the oxidation takes place, upon dissolving this sodium salt into water, it will ionize into its component, which are, for example, sodium and the acetate ion. This acetate ion loses the electron at anode to give you this radical, okay? This negative charge is converting into this radical. Now here, for the sake of the clarity, I just mentioned that this single bond can be written as the single, single electron. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, 
that a bond between two atom is basically a sharing of electron. So either we can write this bond or either we can write two to electron. Why I wrote here in the next step, this electron and this electron will combine together to form the carbon dioxide and generate the methyl radical here. And these two methyl radical ultimately combine together to give you the corresponding alkane. Now what happened at cathode? Now water molecule, of course, we are dissolving this sodium salt into water molecule. It will abstract the electron and convert water molecule into the hydroxide ion and plus the two hydrogen radical. These two hydrogen radical combine together to give you the hydrogen gas here. Now there is some limitation of this reaction as well. And these limitations are that we generally have the, you can see here the symmetrical alkane. Okay, what do you mean by symmetrical alkane? Of course, we if we are using acetic acid, we have the ethane in the product. If we have the propanoic acid, we have basically butane in the product. Okay, now generally we have basically even number of carbon chain in the product like ethane, butane, hexane. Okay, this uh, method uh, sometimes do not provide the odd number of alkane. This is somehow limitations. And it can be covered by mixing or by using the two different carboxylic acid salt. In this case, we may have the different carbon chain of alkane. The fifth method by which alkane can be synthesized is known as the reduction of alkyl halide. Okay, alkyl halides on reduction with nascent hydrogen forms alkane. Now nascent hydrogen means atomic hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen can be obtained by reaction of HCl with zinc or uh, reaction of uh, zinc with acetic acid or reaction of zinc copper in ethanol or reaction of hydrogen iodide with red phosphorus. These are different methods by which nascent hydrogen or the atomic hydrogen can be produced. Now this nascent hydrogen when react with the alkyl halide to give you corresponding alkane and the hydrogen halide. There is an alternate way that alkyl halide can also be reduced catalytically to alkane by hydrogen or lithium aluminum hydride or by hydrogen in presence of a nickel. These are some methods by which we can synthesize alkane. That's all for today's lecture. We will discuss uh, some more informative lecture in our upcoming lecture series. Meanwhile, see you. Bye-bye.